Blender is pretty good when it comes to modeling, sculpting, and rendering. But when it comes to simulations, whether it is rigid bodies, fluids, or even smoke and fire, many people feel like it is not quite up to the task. So let's talk about what's going on with Blender simulation tools, what challenges you might face, and whether it is really a deal breaker, meaning you need to find another software for doing simulations, or whether there are some workarounds that you can use to generate good simulations within Blender. Before we continue, let me ask you a question. Are you struggling to bring your ideas to life? Are you a beginner artist and sure where to start? And do your environments feel flat, lacking depth and storytelling? If the answer is yes, then you need to check out Foundations of Environment Concept Art, a course by industry veteran Jose Vega. With 12 years of experience, Jose has worked with top studios like Netflix, Warner Brothers, Sony, and Riot Games. He was the lead background designer for Netflix's Castlevania, and he is currently a senior concept artist on Magic the Gathering. The course will help you master the fundamentals of word building, and you will learn why some environments look stunning how to create jaw-dropping visuals, and most importantly, the essentials of lighting, perspective, proportions, and much more. If you are serious about working in the industry, this course is a goldmine. You will learn how to structure your portfolio and land your dream job. And by the way, this course is ongoing, with new chapters coming soon. Even as it stands, it is a massive learning experience with something for everyone because it is designed for both beginners and intermediate artists. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description and start learning today. Now back to the video. If you've spent any time in Blender, you probably know that its simulation tools aren't exactly designed to mimic real-world physics, I mean with perfect precision. Instead, Blender relies on game engine-style physics, primarily through the Bullet Physics engine. To deliver results that look good enough for many applications. Think about it this way. The simulation system is built to be fast and user-friendly, so it can handle a lot of heavy lifting without bogging you down with super complex settings. But that speed and simplicity come at a cost. Many of you have noticed issues like unpredictable bounces, non-deterministic behavior, and even particles that act like they've got a mind of their own. Take for example a physics simulation where you set a sphere bouncing in a box. You would expect the ball to keep bouncing in a predictable, endless pattern. I mean, if you've set everything to be perfectly elastic. But instead, you might see it suddenly slow down, or even start bouncing higher and higher out of nowhere. This happens because Blender's simulation system samples states between frames rather than calculating every infinitesimal change. It is like trying to capture a smooth video with a handful of snapshots. You miss a few details, and sometimes the results look a bit off. Now, why does that happen? I would say Blender simulation tools are largely based on approximations. For example, when two objects collide, the software doesn't solve the full calculus behind the impact. It just estimates how much they should bounce off each other. This is why sometimes we see the classic teleporting objects, or bounces that are just not physically accurate. In some forum threads, you might have seen comments about how Blender physics sometimes behave as if objects are pushed out of collision in different ways based on tiny initial differences. It is a bit like when you're trying to stack something precariously and even a slight nudge can make all the difference. The physics engine in Blender is designed to be a good compromise between performance and realism. But that means you're not gonna get the high fidelity simulations that you will see in specialized software such as Houdini. For many of us, especially hobbyists and indie creators, Blender simulation capabilities are more than sufficient. If you want to simulate a bouncing ball or create a fun fluid effect for a short film, Blender will probably do the job easily. But if you are trying to push the envelope, say you are aiming for ultra realistic fluid simulations or intricate CFD work, the limitations become more apparent. You will see numerous artists compare Blender simulations to those in Houdini who dedicated computational fluid dynamic software such as OpenFoam, EmberGen, LiquidGen, and so on. The consensus seemed to be that Blender, while great for getting started and producing decent results, when it comes to large-scale, precision-demanding simulations, you might need to accept some compromises or look at alternatives. For example, in fluid simulations, 
Many artists have noted that Linder's Metaflow used to be unpredictable when working at real-world scales. While it has improved over time, some users still experience occasional issues, like unexpected bursts of motion or flames that rise unnaturally. One common workaround suggested by experienced 3D artists is to simulate at a larger scale and then scale the results down, though this can add an extra step to the workflow. That said, these behaviors are less common than before with the recent versions of Mentaflow, making it more stable and reliable, generally speaking. Of course, this is just one way to tackle fluid simulation issues. Fortunately, forums, tutorials, and community discussions are packed with useful insights, and chances are you will find some workarounds or solutions for most problems and bugs. Now, if you're thinking, so what's the alternative? Well, there are a few paths that you can take. First, if you are already comfortable with Blender and you only need simulations occasionally, you might consider using add-ons like Flip Fluids for liquid simulations, or maybe RBD Lab for rigid body simulations and other stuff as well. Or you can use software such as Empergen for smoke and fire. These tools can offer and deliver results that are closer to what you would expect from a high-end software and they integrate relatively smoothly back into Blender. Another common suggestion is to use dedicated software for the heavy lifting. Houdini is often mentioned as the go-to solution for simulation problems. His node-based approach is incredibly powerful in addition to being flexible, though it does come with a steeper learning curve and in some cases a higher cost. Unless you're gonna get the apprentice version, which by the way has its own limitations. The idea here is to use Blender for everything else, like modeling, texturing, rendering, and then import your simulation data once it's been computed elsewhere. Of course, some folks argue that Blender simulation tools have improved steadily over the years, and that the future updates might address many of the current issues. And with the introduction of simulation nodes in Blender 3.6, we have actually seen tangible enhancements in how simulations are set up and managed. While these nodes have opened up new possibilities and made workflows more flexible, workarounds remain a necessary part of the process, especially for achieving realistic results. Despite these limitations, it is important to remember why so many of us still choose Blender in the first place. I mean, its accessibility, community-driven development, and overall versatility make it a really powerful tool. Even if its simulations aren't perfect, many artists in the community have developed clever hacks and workflows to get the most out of the software. And honestly, if you're not working on high-end visuals for blockbuster movies, generally speaking, Blender is more than good enough when it comes to its simulation capabilities. That is, if you take advantage of the add-ons. Let's also not forget that the simulations are just one part of a much larger system. Whether you are working on animations, video games, or architectural visualizations, the ability to iterate quickly and integrate various aspects on a project often overweighs the occasional quirks in physics behavior. I mean, in a way, it is all about finding the right balance between ideal technical performance and the practical reality of making art. So what should you take away from this? If you are just starting out, or if you rely on Blender for most of your work or your projects, don't be discouraged by its limitations when it comes to simulation. Because as I said, there are many alternatives out there, whether it be within the software, using add-ons, or some external software such as Embergen, LiquidGen, and so on, which are affordable for most people, I guess. And if you need a lot of simulation work for professional projects for clients, you might consider learning a better simulation software such as Houdini, which I think is gonna be a great investment in your future. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.